Hello, uh, happy new year. I guess it's been a couple of weeks, but it's the first time we're seeing you in the new year. So happy new year. Uh, welcome to the Black Dice Society season two, episode one, Through the Black Gates. Before uh, we dive into this too deeply, I rem remind you, uh, especially after our relatively lighthearted holiday episode, uh, that the Black Dice Society is a horror story. Uh, as such, you may see content or situations in this campaign uh, that you won't encounter in a standard D&D campaign that may be disturbing for some viewers. Uh, as always, we have our safety tools in place. Uh, I know everybody's lines and veils. They have ways to let me know if something's going wrong. So if a scene ever stops mid-scene and we just switch suddenly... Maybe because somebody was getting a little uncomfortable. Of course, uh, the most important thing at this table and any other is that everybody feels safe and happy and have a good time. Um, before I jump into our sponsors, let us introduce the people who, without whom we literally could not do this, our wonderful cast, uh, starting with Nahara. Hi everyone, I'm Nora Ibrahim. You can find me everywhere at Norological. And tonight I play Nahara, who is a reborn fallen Azamar undead warlock with a uh, warlock with a few levels of bard. And brother Uriah. Hello, I'm Mark Meir. I use he him pronouns, as does my character, Brother Uriah Macabre, cleric of the grave and worshipper of Ezra, Lady of the Mists. And Tatiana. What's up, everybody? I'm Becca Scott. You can find me at the Becca Scott and at Good Times Society on YouTube. But that's not important now. What's important now is that everything has changed. We must go back to the way things were before. But I did find a shirt. <laughs> oh, I am a barbarian druid. You know what? Now I know what the Weathermay Foxgroves gave Tatiana for Christmas. They gave you. <laughs> A new midwinter ensemble, you know, so you could look more druidic. Is, uh... I might rip it off at any time when my muscles are bursting. You know, just... Oh, we've made it out of a very um, new stretchy fabric that we, uh, we, we've we been working on just for you. Um, not at all for those afflicted by the curse of lycanthropy, but we, but we thought you'd be an excellent test case to uh, just make sure that when you, you know, become... I could rip it. I could. <laughs> they said hulked out, but we've never heard of that term here. It's true. Never, never. Completely. I thought the on the out. <laughs> you did it before it was cool. Um, Valentine. Hello. Hi, I'm Sage Ryan. I go by Not Sage or Pixel Circus everywhere on the internet. And tonight I am playing Valentine. Valentine is a reborn aberrant mind sorcerer with a new tiny dash of rogue. And we both use she, her pronouns. And last but not least, uh, my coffee surrogate here, Desmond. <laughs> Oh, hi, I'm DJ Knight, aka Desmond, a human ranger. Like and throw. Uh, our pronouns are he, him. Thank you all for hanging out with us. You are amazing. And Tanya, unfortunately, cannot be with us this week. Hopefully, she will be back next week. But in the meantime, feel better. Get well soon, Tanya. Um, it, again, I'd like to thank our sponsors, as always, uh, Warriors of Waterdeep. Uh, you have to keep an eye out in-game uh, for, for pictures of us. All the code should be appearing in chat. This is the first of the year. There is a very real chance I have messed something up, so if any of the codes don't work or anything, flag us in chat. The mods will let me know. We'll get it hooked up for you. <laughs> um, Idle Champions, which our code is... Um, hopefully appearing in chat right now if not it is very peen spit p-e-a-n you savages very peen spit thank you to secret labs chairs <laughs> there's uh again you know it's like riding around in the den link in chat there if you if you're thinking about getting a new chair highly recommended um RT Public Stories Live, which of course you know. Uh, you can get uh, mugs, hats, pillows, notebooks, uh, very swanky t-shirts that maybe some of us were wearing before we changed into our into our outfits here. Um, uh, that link is showing up. And of course, Die Hard Dice. Uh, our custom sets are all sold out, but maybe I'm going to have something special to announce next week. I don't know. But in the meantime, you can use code BDS to get 10% off your dice purchase um also we have a patreon 
where you can find our exclusive bonus show that we record after this. Um, extra content, side adventures. We posted the the Dark Lords meeting uh, over in December. If you haven't seen that yet, that one was actually up free to the public. A little uh, holiday gift from all of us to you. Whereas Strahd Von Zarevich, Aslan Rex, and the newest Dark Lord, if you're not caught up, maybe go back and watch watch the uh, season finale last, last year. It was... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the newest Dark Lord <laughs> all got together uh, and talked through what the new normal was going to be. Still, uh, just going to say, I'm going to take one last victory lap of the fact that I got to pay off a plot twist literally 30 episodes in the making. That's it. It's very fulfilling. Very fulfilling. So, with that being said, now on with our story. Since you recovered Tatiana from the Barbagazi, the friendly dwarves that apparently live in the mountains of the perpetually frozen Lamordia. It is past the midwinter season into the new year. Not that you could really tell in the lands of the mist, and Lamordia in particular. It is always just cold and icy and slushy, although the hot chocolate, warm cider, and mold wine that is readily available at the carnival has helped keep some of the chill out of your bones, at least. But not necessarily the chill out of your hearts in light of recent events. Finn has gone off to do something for Isolde uh, that she would not quite explain to you at the time. Uh, she said it would make sense later, I and mean, you all know not to overly force your friend when she's not feeling particularly chatty. But you all know that Barovia lay ahead. One way or another, that is your next location. The caller is there. Von Zarevich himself is there. A fearsome foe, the most fearsome foe, honestly. And yet, while some of you might be seeking his destruction. Some of you might be seeking him for answers, and some of you still might be seeking him for partnership. No matter what your motivation, the location is clear. So, in these last few days, I ask, how have you been occupying yourself in your time? I'm going to go in the opposite way that we came uh, from the top. Uh, we found what Desmond had been doing ahead of midwinter, mostly cooking as a way of uh, occupying his mind and occupying his time. But what has he been up to since? Cooking and working out. That is it. He's just, he doesn't want to talk too much. He's not talking to anybody. He's just a little defeated. So he's just torn on everything. And just quiet. And also eating a lot of smoked meats because they're delicious. And Valentine? 
Uh, Valentine still is having a little trouble kind of looking anyone in the eyes within the party after everything that they saw and went through together and learned. Um, so Valentine's been spending even a little more time in her head. Uh, it's more common to find her sitting and staring off into space, the kind of face that you would usually see her making when she's communicating with someone in her head. Um, often find her there for sometimes an hour, sometimes longer, just silently staring, unblinking, uh, and then doing her best when it's time for everyone to gather and do activities to fall in line and keep up. Important point of clarification, Valentine. It one moment while you were in the Feywild, you instructed Tregram to keep a record of everything that had happened and make sure that it was transmitted back to the God Brain as soon as he could. We all know yeah. what happened after that. Yeah. Was it your intent that that record be transmitted after you returned to the Miss? Uh, the, the primary reason for the, the record was to make sure that she was able to be reminded should her memory be taken from her. Um, so I think she has pruned a bit of the story to be transmitted to the God brain and really focused on the transgressions of uh, her, her least favorite people to be transmitted. As far as you know, to the best of his ability, Tregrum has complied with your wishes and did not say the things you asked him not to say. To the best of your so, knowledge. <laughs> yeah, she's been spending a lot of time, though, actually kind of communing with Tregrum, um, as opposed to waiting for him to pop up when he is needed. There's been a lot of internal conversation lately. We'll come back to that. <laughs> uh, Tatiana, again, you'd gone out hunting, encountered a band of friendly winter dwarves uh, who at least temporarily helped lift your spirits with their particularly stout ale. Uh, but now that they have retreated into the mountains and life is returning back to normal with that same weight of this place of being back in the mist upon you, but free from your various curses and afflictions, your tie to Lord Soth and many of the other things that had laid claim on your soul. What has Tatiana been doing? Tatiana feels very lost. Uh, along with Valentine, they have been training in the woods training and training and training because she knows not else what else to do. Nika changed and there was nothing that our friendship could do to stop whatever that was. Everything Tatiana thought she knew has been rocked and so she just keep, keeps getting more and more yoked, you know, when in doubt. You're testing the parameters of the stretchiness of the fabric. The weather may fox I grow will, more. I will burst through it one day. Brother, These muscles cannot be contained. Brother Uriah. I think that the necessity to face Strad von Zarovich himself and in Barovia has been weighing rather heavily on my mind and its consequences for the future. Uh, as such, I have been making some provisions for Hilde's future and education should we <clears throat> fail to return from Barovia. I assume there are those uh, Eremos, most particularly, uh, who I would confide in. Uh, if we don't return, then Hildy would be his responsibility. When you say this to Eremos, he's like, 
Nah, you're talking nonsense, man. What you mean you're not gonna be returning? <laughs> Come on, everybody comes back to the carnival sooner or later. Yes, well, I certainly hope that's the case, my friend, but um, one must be uh, realistic about such things. Better to have made these provisions than be caught flat-footed. Hildy's future is too important to leave to chance. You see his huge smile sort of fades for a second, and he puts a massive hand on your shoulder as gently as you've ever felt him do it, and he just leans in and he goes, Yeah, man, we look after the little miss, huh? You just uh, look after yourself and your friends. Thank you, Amos. That, that sets my mind at ease greatly. Um, well, I suppose we should... Uh, Try to enjoy the few nights we have left before we depart. You and I think any other time that Uriah has, who oh, go on. I, I was just going to say, you see Hildy come walking around the corner, happily holding a, a mug of hot cocoa the size of her head. In the moment uh, she lays eyes on the two of you, Eremos just looks at you and he goes, Ah, oh, brother Uriah, you ain't got to rough me up so. Ah, oh, oh, you're so strong, brother Uriah. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yes, well, you don't know my own strength sometimes. Mm. Um, ah, Hildy, uh, there you are. Uh, I should mention that Brother Uriah, of course, since midwinter, has also been continuing his education of Hildy and not directly challenging her sort of very pro Falkovian beliefs. But yeah, he has been attempting to engage in a little bit of deprogramming, just in the sense of, well, this is the way that things are run in other domains, and maybe maybe the people are happier because of it. Well, who can say? Wait, but, wait, wait. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, Bra not Brussels, directly Brussels, challenged. Brussels, you're right. You mean to tell me that to other places, they don't do the impaling for the crimes? <laughs> No, um, not as not as a rule, um, and and certainly not with the uh, vigor and uh, frequency that uh, they do in Falkovnia. Um, uh, yes, it's no, just another form of government, and uh, you know, a legal system that doesn't just rely on decrees of execution. No, but is it, but it is it that the threat of the imminent death is what keeps people um, them obeying the laws and things. Even here in the carnival, you know, um, it's all, she has a sword and, you know, you get out of line and you know, uh, and where you oh, come from yes. in, in the dark hun also. There's a, was the car, car, got, car, got, car, car, got, there's a secret car police. Get, yes, yes the they car come get. and they take you away if you don't do the thing. So this is, uh, this is the way, yeah. Oh, yes, but uh, you, you will notice that uh, the, the, the car guy doesn't take everyone away. It doesn't take large groups of people all the time. And Isolde, uh, though she does uh, admittedly rely on the threat, ultimate threat of uh, violence um, to keep order, uh, doesn't impale dozens of her subjects um, on a regular basis. <clears throat> ah, so what you're saying, you just visit the terrible execution on occasion and it serves as a warning for the rest of the people. A last resort might be uh, a good way of phrasing it. I, uh, yeah, I understand. As things are done, it's very different. As I think, I think the Falkovnia, it, it, it might be some more effective, really. But yeah, I, I, I understand, brother. You're right. I understand. Yeah. Would you yes, like? Would you um, like some of the chocolate? It, it gives you this warm feeling in Satomi. I'd never experienced this before. Oh, uh, yes, of course. And um, as mentioned, uh, Hilde, you know that uh, we need to. Um, we need to leave the carnival uh, for a time. Uh, we uh, have business in Barovia. Again? No, you just got back. You were gone for so long. Yes. Yes, we we might be gone for longer this time. Who can say? Um, such uh, matters sometimes require a great deal of time to resolve. She just looks at you for a second and she goes, yeah. Okay, Yavol. And she walks over to a nearby tent and comes back out again. Uh, with a little satchel of her belongings and her wooden sword. And she's like, ah, will you go to Barovia? That's okay. I will protect you on the travels. Ooh. It's fine. Yes. Well, yeah. that's the thing, Hildy. I, I don't think we could deprive the carnival of your protection. Uh, you and Ermos will, will need to uh, work together while we're away to uh, make sure everyone is safe here. 
Eremos does look down at her and he's like, ah, I do need your assistance here, little miss. You know, everybody sees me coming and stomping true, but you got the lower eyes to the ground, you know. And she looks up at him. She looks at Uriah and she looks up at him. She looks at Uriah and she says, Brother Uriah, I has given my word that I would protect the carnival as well and I cannot go back on it. I hope you understand. I do not wish to disappoint you, my friend. Oh, no, no. Uh, we will, of course, uh, be sorry to be deprived of your mighty sword arm, but uh, we will rest easy knowing that it is here uh, protecting the carnival. <clears throat> uh, Tatiana, she does okay. She, I don't know if she's as good a fighter as me, really. She does. She's never... She, every time I go to challenge her, she walks away, so I don't know. So, But, uh, but otherwise, mm. it would be fine. Yes, yes. Um... Yeah, I, we did have that talk about not openly challenging uh, Tatiana like that, yes? Eremos looks at her and he's like, please don't openly challenge Tatiana, okay? And she's like, ah, okay, fine, I won't openly. But you, but Zuriah, you tell her that when she's ready, I teach her a singer to how we do it in Valkovnia, yeah? Of yeah, course. she, she thinks when they, was, yeah. when they was teaching her the bear style there, they showed her everything we got. No, no. I know things. Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you do, uh, Hildy. Um, uh, there's some uh, further preparations that I must make, and, and of course, um, uh, Nahara and I were going to have a, a, a just Oh, a, a you're nice... Nahara. I've seen you. You go walking, so um, you think I don't see you because you're off in the trees. No, I see. It's funny. That's kind of gross, though, I think. This is gross. Mm. Uh, I'll take that under advisement. Um, if you will uh, We'll see you soon, uh, and, and definitely before we depart. Yeah, Javi to Zane, and she does. Javi to Zane. The airmost just kind of gives you the thumbs up and turns and leaves with her. <laughs> Which hmm. Nahara? What has Nahara been doing over this time? Well, Nahara hasn't shared the same history with uh, with Veronica as most of her party has, and so, but she does still feel uh, this their sense of suffering and loss. And so being a bard that she is, she will still take brief moments uh, while still respecting everybody's space, but will still try to lighten the mood a little bit. And so, um, which includes having some flying races with Fen. Uh, I learned this one thing where I keep my hands on my hips, but I do a one winged push up that I do a challenge <laughs> Tatiana to, to push up. So she does the one armed and I do a one winged push up. Uh, and that's, that's been my, my exercise for probably my whole life. Um, <laughs> Uh, it turns out as reborns don't need to eat um, in some sort of logic in that sense. Uh, she doesn't also get full. And so she's been trying all of Desmond's um, barbecue and cooking um, and spending, of course, some quality time with Uriah when we do get a chance to have some moments to ourselves. But mostly she has been concentrating on this orb that the Weather May Foxgrove sisters had given her with great concentration, um, trying to figure out uh, how specifically she connects to it and, and what uh, it can do to aid her. Nahara. Give me a wisdom check, not a save, a check. Wisdom check. There's a 19. As you are looking in this crystal ball, what is going through your mind? What is it that you hope it will show you? When they had given this to me, they had specifically said it would aid with my lost memories or perhaps would. And so that is a uh, my primary concern, but I'm also thinking about the days ahead and what lies for us in store when we get to Brovia, perhaps. As you are looking into the ball and you are allowing your mind to sort of open up here 
you start to hear the sounds of the beat of horse hooves and the wheels of a wagon turning. And you feel, it is almost like you don't see it in the crystal ball so much as you sort of enter this image. And you look down and you see an unfamiliar pair of hands, but there's nothing reflective for you to be able to look at yourself. And you're wearing an all white gown that is silk and sumptuous. It is magnificent and probably incredibly expensive. If it's not a wedding garment, it is some sort of a high society, high function thing. As you look out the window, the cart is rolling through a barren landscape at night. And as you look up ahead, you are on the path towards a castle that stands looming with two very tall, uneven spires lit by the full moon. And as you kind of take in the scene, you realize, although you're alone in this carriage, you're not alone on this trip because 20 feet away, just to the left and right of the road, just inside of the tree line, are huge wolves. The biggest wolves you've ever seen. Bigger than when you saw Tatiana turn into a giant wolf in the Feywild. They're gargantuan, but they're just walking along. And one of them turns and looks at you, complete disinterest in its eyes, as it is escorting you and this carriage towards this castle. And then it fades, and you're back here. Is it... Is anybody nearby when I'm doing this, or am I? I would say, is that up to you? Mm-hmm. When, when when you decided to do this, would you have done it around someone else, or would you would you have been alone? I think I would have been alone, but I would like to find Uriah. He's not difficult to locate. When I saw this, did I get a sense that this was future or past? It's difficult to say, but you do know you didn't recognize the hands. It was definitely your point of view. It was you. But as you look down, you were different. Uriah? Yes, uh, Nahara, um, you look concerned. Uh, uh, Yes. um, uh, Well, I mean, I mean... It's I very am. concerning what we're about to face, certainly, but um, this seemed more like a specific concern. Well, I was trying to gain some insight into this uh, crystal ball that the sisters had given me, mm-hmm. but I saw something so strange. It was, from my perspective, it was, it was me in, in a carriage being led by horses and, and wolves to a, to a castle. But when I looked down at my hands, they were, they, I knew they were mine, but I didn't recognize them. I don't know what it means. You may have been uh, through your scrying, seeing through someone else's eyes, um, or, or do you think you've Possibly. been to Barovia before? I couldn't say. Interesting. Did wolves, you say? Yes. Huge. I've never seen anything like it. Well, that certainly uh, jibes with what I've heard of Barovia. They say that von Zarovich commands the children of the night, all manner of beasts, wolves among them. I just, it was very strange not knowing whether it was me or not. You think I... this could have been a buried memory? Part of me hopes so, but if it is, I'm... It's equally terrifying. Yes. Yes, yeah, so there were 
I suppose it might explain... Well, von Zarovich has seemed to uh, take an interest, yes? Yes. I, I don't know why. I was wearing a white gown. Mm. If it was me. Yes. Is there anything that you know about this land? I know that the hatred between Strahd von Zarovich and my king, Aslan Rex, was legendary. I, to be honest, any information that Darkonians received about Barovia was certainly filtered through the lens of propaganda. Von Zarovich is meant to be terrible. We both stood in his presence, yes. or at least within our own minds. We both have felt his power. It is said that the people of Barovia follow him through sheer terror. I couldn't... I couldn't imagine anybody following willingly. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he has his loyal retainers. So they've probably been with him for quite some time. What is your biggest concern? Biggest concern? About going to Barovia, do you mean? Yes. Oh. Well, I will say this. Um, dying is probably the least among them. Uh, if the stories are to be believed, von Zarovich has all manner of torment, some that could be visited on um, an eternal basis. I just worry that because of Azalin, that he would sense that, and hmm. I, I can't imagine ever feeling like we were safe. Yes. Yes, if you're wondering what my greatest concern is, it's, well, frankly, it's for you. Thank you. I'm worried. Hmm. I, I think, God. <laughs> Usually, even though we've been faced with horrendous things, it's it's never really, I've never felt this sense of dread, I suppose. Yes. This much. Well, oftentimes we have brushed up against beings of great power, but they're not necessarily aware of our presence. With von Zarovich, it's different. I think, well, we know he's been observing us for some time. Yes. We will need to be on our guard constantly while within Barovia's bounds. I agree. I think that um, this whole experience so far, I've, well, I've been pleasantly distracted by you and uh, but the rest of the time I've I've my my thoughts have been consumed by wanting to know everything that's happened to me that I lost any sort of awareness of how absolutely terrifying this all is. Yes, well I'm I'm sure von Zarovich himself will not hesitate to remind us of that. Valentine. As you and Tatiana are making your way back towards the carnival after one of your morning sessions, Tregram pipes up and says, Um, <clears throat> Valentine, uh, I, I hate to interrupt, but I do have something that I think you will find to be of note. And what might that be? Um, I, I realize, um, it, it appears that you and your companions were seeking entrance into, uh, Barovia, a, a notoriously difficult place to arrive at, I'm told. Yes. Um, uh, perhaps I have located, uh, a guide. 
And who might that be? Uh, perhaps an unfortunate wayward traveler that came within range of your guardians who linger in the darkness and perhaps uh, before they separated this man from his uh, brain and spinal fluid uh, it occurred to us that he might be of some more assistance um he a says prisoner. he's a, a vil, uh, an uh, unwilling guest yes he says he's what a vistani uh, apparently they're locals um, to Barovia. They can come and go at will, which seems foolish, really. But he was one uh, traveling through the mists uh, unmolested to a point. And where is he now? Well, you know, our um, <clears throat> associates are not necessarily fans of direct sunlight. Um... He's been sequestered somewhere nearby in dark. I can guide you, of course. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Trekron. Uh, what I was saying was you're getting faster when you do your your reps tree to tree, but I wonder, maybe you can leap from the tree next time, eh? Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, I, I will try that. Tatiana, I'm sure you, you didn't notice. Never mind. Um, you pay such close attention. I love that, Valentine. I love our training sessions. Uh, an interruption has occurred, and I think we need to go and handle it. I am with you, whatever you need. Should I give my cook grease? Yeah. Probably. I already had them. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I mean, get them, like, as in... <laughs> <laughs> and in clarifying my with straps instead of my back straps, do you see? <laughs> Sneakier. I like it a lot. Uh, I think I think sneaky is a great way for us to proceed into where we're heading. Um, I'd like to clarify with Treadrum just like when he says nearby, are we talking like are we talking like a I could run there and get back or five hundred yards. Excellent. Then I will just kind of, without a lot of explanation, start leading Tatiana in the direction Tregrim leads me. Mm -hmm. Race you! No. <laughs> like running, but changing, looking over my shoulder <laughs> to change direction. Valentine, as always, does not run. <laughs> it's, hey, if you're important, they'll wait. Um. This is part of training. Come on. And I run backwards. <laughs> okay. Okay. This way? Although oh, we're going this way. The carnival is its own domain. Uh, it very much, the edges of it take on the characteristics of wherever you are. And Lamordia is objectively awful. Uh, it is Major just armor. the worst parts of winter. Uh, the, there's just enough sludgy gray snow on the ground to make your shoes wet and sop up the edge of your pants, but the rocks are still jutting out just enough that it is uncomfortable. The humidity in the air is enough to make your nose feel like it is going to burn and fall off, and yet somehow your lungs are still dry. Tatiana, not yours, Valentine. It's just the worst. Every once in a while. I will say my lungs are quite dry, always. <laughs> you know what? This place is so bad, they're not now. They're Tribble not now. Demon. It's weird. You know what I mean? Like, again, your lungs are still <laughs> burning even though you don't breathe. It's just like, what? This place sucks. Every once in a while, you still see just like what you saw before, Valentine. Odd birds covered in stitches with mismatched wings. Um squirrels that crawl that have uh what looks like lizard teeth instead of squirrel teeth making their way through the trees it's just everything here is twisted and misshapen and much of it intentionally so but as promised tregrum guides you about 500 yards and you see there is a place where uh there is a small cave that you can see. Uh, it's probably about seven foot tall. And even though it is daytime, it is inky black inside. 
Um, okay, Tatiana, we're meeting a friend here, and we shouldn't be violent initially, but we should have a signal for if we need to be. What friend of yours have I not met that lives in cave? A new friend that I haven't met yet, but someone that I believe can help us get access to Barovia. Okay, you haven't met. I have no more questions. So I'll proceed in. Um, Valentine, as you approach, also I'm not sure the source of that echo, but it just started happening. So if someone just turns something yeah. on, turn that thing off. <laughs> Uh, Valentine, as you approach just for a moment, a split second, you get the distinct impression of seeing you and Tatiana approach the cave. Like if you were physically in the cave and the two of you were walking in, you see it, but just a flash of you approaching in your mind. <sighs> this place sucks. Okay. I'll keep going. Uh, uh, Tat uh, um, Tatiana, uh, hopefully, um, took your message to heart. Um, I've made it known that you were approaching. I believe there will be no fisticuffs this time, which is wonderful. Um, just, uh, one second here, and you hear, ah, ah, and a person comes flying out of the back of the cave and just lands in a heap in front of you with his hands and feet bound. I cast calm emotions. Ah, I pulled my kukri. <laughs> wherever you've been, hard to believe it, but wherever you're going with us is probably better. Okay? In the cave, they were... Oh. They were monsters. Yeah, they do that. Tatiana, from the back, you do hear. But nothing moves. It's just pitch black back there. I'm going to buy the um, like rope binding their hands, help them up <laughs> to their feet. Whew, he looks like a 20 something guy. One thing you but. You've both noticed now that people in the lands of the mist tend to look much older than they are. Um, mm -hmm. So he looks like he might be in his late 20s. He could be 17, who can say? Uh, but he does sort of have a little bit of a scruffy beard and he has a common working man's clothing on. But uh, he does just seem like, ooh, um, I was freaked out, but I, I guess I'm okay. Uh, okay um, do you mind? Um, or at least uh, any kind of points down to the leg binds. I uh, hold really... on. I point at the kukri. This is not who I'm not supposed to do violence on, right? It is. No, we're not supposed to do violence on him. Oh, him. Yes. Uh, also, we should leave alone whatever that noise is in the cave. No violence overall. He's with us. She slowly puts her kukri back. It's I'll just take... it was a fast movement is all. And you said no violence, but I was not expecting that. So... I appreciate I that you're always prepared. I'm going to reach down. I'm going to cut the binds just on his legs. And then I'm going to... You do hear Trekram speak up and he says, I mean, we could allow them to reveal themselves to Tatiana. If only to see the look on her face. It might be quite humorous. Not now. Yes, yes, no. That's, yes, no that, that's, of course, of course, of course. And I'll lean over to the man in front of me mm -hmm. and just say, I have no intention of draining your brain out of your body. Oh, thank God. But I can. So do operate with that in mind and know that if you're cool, we're cool. I suggest you be cool. I was I was just trying to make my way back home from Lamordia and I got grabbed by these things and right when I thought it was all over, it they just sort of just tied me up instead. They didn't talk. Uh, you didn't do anything to get the attention? You don't have any kind of long-running feud with... Well, let's not blame, you know, the, the victim in this case. I, was just, I just 
making my way through the mist, which I realize is unusual, but that's what we Vistani do. Interesting. I, I just wanted to go home to Barovia. What is... And it's that not... you said Lamortia was your home. No, I was going Lies! from Lamortia. Cookery! <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um... Lamortia to Barovia! From Lamortia to Barovia! <laughs> Okay, and, that's better. Tatiana, you notice he takes a step away from you further towards the cave, but then looks back towards the cave and actually takes two steps towards you instead. Like, even with the kukri out, he would rather face you than what's back there. Could what's we, back there? Could, could we just, could we do this? You should start walking. Not here. I, 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 I'll tell you, I, I have no coin. I am a humble man. I, I will tell mm. you anything. I, I will pledge myself into your service. Just, I owe oh, it. Do we look like we need coin? Look at my shirt. Or service. Look at her cookeries. <laughs> <laughs> my life may be void, yes. Uh, well, whatever I can do to be of some use. Understood. Walking first. You're mm. taking us to Barovia, and then you get to go home. Oh, oh, uh, okay. okay but it's that way, and he very much is pointing away from the carnival. He's like, we could enter the mist over there, and... and, and... Great. We well, have a stop to make. We need to get the rest of our party. Ooh, okay. Um, and you're going to have to be very careful to not upset them and earn their trust. Do you have any sources of fire? Um, because this, you should probably ignite fire this cave and then run very quickly. Oh, the, the that won't be necessary. You notice, you see the wheels in his head turning, uh, Valentine. You know how to easily read a man. And yet, the mystical calm emotion still has a grip on him. And he's, I mean, okay, I, nothing makes sense in Lamordia. Fine. Okay. I'm going to send a telepathic message to him <laughs> mm -hmm. and just say, do you think they would have handed you over to me if we weren't safe from them? That is terrifying by implication, but yes, I agree. Yes. As right. it should be. There are so many Walk. pronouns. I am lost. So we're walking. <laughs> oh, that was in your mind. It was yeah, it was in mind. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, all right, Tatiana. Uh, okay, we while we walk, I have questions. You walk in front, I walk behind so I can watch you. Listen, little man, how did you end up in this cave again? You are taken, you said? Uh, yes, uh, Lucio. My name is Lucio. Um, this is I, a nice name. Uh, thank you. What is yours? I look at the, uh, Valentine first to confirm it's okay. Just Tatiana. You see his eyes do visibly widen. He says, Tatiana's your name. Tatiana's my name. And you wish to go to Barovia? And I wish to go to Barovia. I've never been to Barovia. What's it like there? Is it nice? The place I am from, it became very dark and sad. I don't want to talk about it. I would like to visit someplace happy and nice. I don't know that happy and nice fits the description of Barovia. But perhaps for Tatiana, Barovia is a very different experience. Why do you say that? This is all new information to Tatiana. Hmm, no reason. Um, uh, yes, shall we, uh, 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 okay. uh <clears throat> um, you, Valentine, he looks at you and he's like, uh, mm, mm, mm. Could, could you, uh. I have formed the telepathic link. Who are you people? You're taking Tatiana to Barovia? I don't know if that is the most brilliant or the most foolhardy thing I've ever heard. I'm going to need you to start making sense. That has not been the shape of this day, okay? But I don't I don't care. I'm sorry. I don't care what your day but, has been like. I'm sure it's very hard. We're doing you a great service right now by not having your brains eaten. So please explain to me what you're talking about. The lord of our lands lost someone very dear to him that he has been seeking to recover named Tatiana. Is this out loud? 
This is in in their minds. But he is. But Tatiana, he is. He is giving you this one though, Tatiana. Valentine literally does <laughs> lean over to Tatiana and just go, "I'll tell you everything later. Don't worry about it." Okay. How long ago? What time? works differently there and very differently for him we are not from anywhere around here so i don't think that this is the tatiana that strahd is looking for <gasps> you say his name so casually yeah i say everyone's name casually Um, Strahd is primarily who we're looking for, so I'm sure we'll get plenty of answers once we arrive. When I guide you safely to Barovia, I assume I'll be free to go on my way before you go seeking Lord Strahd? Lord Von Zarevich? Yes. <sighs> yes, then please might we make haste. To the carnival first. Want darkness to catch us out here again. Desmond. What does Tatiana hear of <laughs> all of this? <laughs> okay, so I'm definitely just like tea spilling telepathically on the walk back um, <laughs> to Tatiana. <gasps> Cause like I feel like I feel like a thing that people don't know is the way that Valentine speaks out loud versus the way that Valentine speaks to Tatiana exclusively in private <laughs> is like really different. Girl, girl. A hundred percent. She's like. You would not believe. <laughs> uh, and I will absolutely tell Tatiana everything. Um, but like in a way that makes it seem like really chill and nothing to worry about. I would. Maybe we can use this to our advantage. Who knows? Maybe it is a benefit. It is a great name. It is a great name. It's all I remember of my childhood. Valentine also in like kind of a weird spot, just kind of like while walking, gives Tatiana like a little like half hug. Oh, that's what's weird. We're, that we're was gonna walk and hug. Word. We're gonna walk and hug a little okay. bit, and it's a little weird. Thank you. I wasn't. It's fine. I'm fine with it. It's fine. I grew up in the fighting pits, and that's how I like it. I would never be so strong without. It's okay. It's okay. And she'll just reach out to hold Tatiana's hand as they walk back. Hmm. Although, uh, Tatiana, you, you do know that um, Jibaku did work to make your life as comfortable as she could without turning you soft. Comfortable to Jibaku is not said comfortable to everyone else. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. She whispered to me weaknesses of opponents sometimes. But that's it. Sometimes extra crust of bread. But no one can know. Desmond. You. Yeah. As you are there cooking, unbidden, the image of your brother Armand, the last time you saw him, springs to life again. Still in his dress wear, covered in Nika's blood, standing side by side with you, drawing his sword against Soth and the oncoming zombie hordes, swearing to die side by side as brothers as the mist rolled in. Now this. A moment later, you hear in your mind Rose's voice. Ooh, that is unfortunate. Hello, Rose. Hey, Desmond. Um, sorry to pop in like this. Normally, I, I would come to see you in person because can't really find your like anywhere else in the mist, but I'm a little tied up at the moment. 
for you, the only response to that is, is that a good or a bad thing? Uh, to be determined. I'm, I'm kind of used to coming and going how I will. Um, so, so being, uh, being held up is, uh, unusual. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in the process of figuring it out though. Good. What's on your mind? Well, uh, words kind of gotten to me about what happened. You want to talk about it? Not particularly. Mm. Is that the reason why you showed me my brother? Oh, no. That, no, purely coincidental. That, was that, that was your brother? I didn't even know who that was. I just kind of caught a glimpse on it when I was doing my thing here. That is my brother Armand. The mistook him too, then. Oh no, he's alive. I mean, the mistook you when you're alive, and okay. Valentine and Tatiana. Maybe. Well, maybe not Valentine. Maybe not Nahara either. Hey, I have a question for you, brother Uriah. You might have an answer. Uh, brother Uriah, in his line of work, he didn't really seem too off-put by the fact that Nahara's, you know, not all the way alive. Although I guess a cleric of the grave wouldn't care, huh? Huh. Huh? Hmm. I like my men warm personally, but to each their own. I don't know how to take that, so I'm going to plead the fifth. Uh... <laughs> Uh, well, I just wanted to give you a little heads up. Heads up to what? Should I uh, be concerned? Always. You know where you are. You know where you are. The, the, the Prismere, I'm sure that was, I'm sure that was quite a thing. I've been, I've been there, believe it or not. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah. That does not surprise me. It's a little green for my taste. A little cheery. I don't know. Not my It's kind of perfect. Yeah. I'm a fan of green. Yeah. 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 Um, so, you know, I know we... um. I know you don't actually know me very well. We do this dance on occasion and, you know, have our moment and go our separate ways. Although, um, in my line of work, I'm called upon to do some unpleasant things on occasion. Uh, but believe it or not, it's never personal. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love my work, but it's never, it's never personal. You know, I don't understand it. So you, when emotions get involved, things just get messy. All of a sudden, I feel like I should be concerned. I told you, Desmond, look around you. You absolutely should always be concerned. At the carnival. Here, I have people who I know, who I trust, and who eat a lot of smoked meat, so... <laughs> this is a benefit for now. I don't have to worry as much here as I do anywhere else. I mean, I brought Uriah the plate of old Broadfoot's brisket. I mean, don't you have we forgotten? Has it is is that something so common that it that didn't nothing nothing for that? No, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Um. So you're saying I should be worried about people who come out of closets in the middle of a place that you know is very unsafe and hand me delicious plates of food. I mean. Although apparently it's worked out fine for us, it is an odd inciting incident, you must say. Oh, I fully agree. But mm -hmm. a person who came out of a closet nowhere near where they actually were to deliver me food, telling me that it's not safe when it wasn't safe there. Safe issue. It's interesting choice of words and so on. 
well. Also, I'm still, I still haven't forgotten that I feel like I should be concerned considering you prefaced all of this with when you have certain things you do, it's not personal. So what is it that you're about to do that isn't personal? I feel like it's happening and I feel like it's going to be to me. Well, uh, two things, two things. Oh, there's two of them. Okay. Yeah, two things. Um, things are about to get a lot more complicated. <laughs> but I do, want, uh, I do want you to know, I got nothing against you. I don't have anything against any of your friends, actually. So what is it that you're about to do to us? Because I feel like you wouldn't have mentioned them if it wasn't going to be a thing that you did that affect us, affected us all. So what is it that I should feel concerned about that there are two things? Oh, I just came by to talk in riddles and scratch at your brain a little bit. I got to, uh, I do need to go. Like I said, I kind of um, uncharacteristically uh, tied down right now. So I need to uh, slip these bonds and then uh, maybe I'll come pay you another another visit uh what do what do you want now you already had old broadfoot's brisket but you had the real thing from the man so i feel like that won't hit quite as well um is there deer sausage from uh mordant is there um uh when you were on that train on that train they had those fancy cocktails i could maybe grab one of those for you um could uh or what was the what is the name of that place? Uh, Water Deep. Uh, they got all kinds of things there. I mean, okay, requests? I'll bite. I'll take something from Water Deep, but mm. why is it that you have two things that you're not going to necessarily be happy about doing to myself and my party that has you wanting to give me gifts? Uh, I I've... never said I don't want to do them. I said it wouldn't be personal, and then you she's gone. <laughs> Right. About this time, Valentine, Tatiana, you come back to where you know Desmond is, Nahara and Uriah, not far away. And you all see they have a man whose hands are bound, who looks alternatively deep in thought slash terrified at Tatiana, um, that when he sees you all, makes a point of not making any eye contact and just sort of stands there. Look, um, Valentine found a very willing guide. Um, who, who is what? this man and why, why is he bound? I can explain all of that. Uh, that was just to make sure that he was cool. Uh, is, is he? Is, is, is he cool? He cool? So far, cool. so good, but Incredibly we haven't freed cool. his hands yet to find out what he would do if we did. But uh, essentially, he was being attacked and held prisoner in a cave in the woods. Uh, but he's from Barovia. He attempts oh. to bow, but he, when his hands are bound, it sort of like just doesn't quite work when he would have flourished. He's like, um, what, and, what, what, what exactly was he being attacked by? We've tried to get information, and Lucio here is Lucio. withholding. Is that, oh, uh, yes. I, no, I was not withholding. I was making my way through the mist from Lamoria to Barovia when I was set upon these tall, terrible creatures, and they had tentacles in front of glowing red eyes, and I oh. thought that they were going to oh, kill me. Oh, we've been those. Oh, yes. So? Yes. Um, Lucio, are you, are you injured? Uh, no, no, I feel like, oh, oh, are you a cleric, a healer of some sort? Uh, yes, uh, yes, a uh, follower of could, Ezra, could Lady just, of the Mists. Could you just make sure that you, nothing was, and he, like, starts pulling, parting his hair for you to look at the back of his head? I'm sure, fairly certain if your brain was eaten, you would know. <laughs> uh, brother, brother Uriah, you do see a hint of if, if a, a a very toothy mouth was beginning to clamp down on the back of his head and kind of turn back. Like, the, um, the scalp bleeds dramatically, so it, you realize it was very much like, hey, wait a second. <laughs> um, yes, there there are some abrasions uh, back here. Nothing nothing too serious. Uh, I, I don't think there's a risk of infection. Um, um, <sighs> you, you might want to get some rest. 
Uh, I'll sleep when I'm home. Thanks. Uh, I've been tasked by these lovely people here uh, to guide you all to Barovia. And then I've been told I will be released to very much go on my way and let you go on yours. Oh, are you a Mistwalker? I'm a Vistani. Oh. Uh, Do you have to carry thigh meat or, or signets or such of the like in order uh, to get to places? I have a niche reference. I don't. Um, do you just do it willingly? Can you just could travel? Or do you need with, assistance? I with... mean, I'm, I am a Vistani. Oh, you are, you do not hail from these lands. No, you do not. Well, uh, I, I do. It, it, well, then, you know, we're, we're Vistani. We... Yes, yes. Uh, um, uh, I, I think we could have no safer guide through the mists than this gentleman, if what he says is true. Uh, uh, Although, um, and he turns and he it's... looks at Desmond and he leans over towards you, Tatiana, and he says, why is that man so sad? I feel it coming off of him. We are all sad, but Desmond, maybe most of all, we lost a friend. It's best not to ask. You see, he looks at you for a second, Desmond, and he says, uh, You're a man of the woods, eh? Yeah. Nah, as am I. Lucio, well met. And he does try and extend one of the hands that isn't bound. Uh, would it be all right if we, we cut those bombs? This yeah. seems a bit rude to be a. Uh, I like uh, to keep we, him in hand. Uh, we outnumber him. No, I'm not scared of him. And if he is going to help us. He just so he knows that he is, a, he is not, you know, he is our guide and that's it. I don't know. He very much looks up at you, Tatiana. You stand ahead above him. And he's like, I'm quite clear of where I fit into this. Yes, ma'am. That's true. I take Kukri and I cut bonds. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's better. A little more um, civilized. We're, we're all friends here, aren't we? Desmond... Give me a survival check with advantage. Ooh, yay. It's either really good or really not good. Let's see. Survey says. Oh, it's literally uh, the worst. Nine. Because I got four on both of these die. Yay. It, it was just kind of in passing. Actually, believe it or not, Tatiana, you can give me survival also. Oh. You were becoming a child. Not advantage for you. You're becoming a child of the forest. <laughs> he already is one. Twelve. Both of you just sort of in passing notice that whatever these bonds were made out of whatever plant they were woven out of is weird. It's nothing you ever seen before. It's not, there's nothing like anomalous about it. It's not weeping blood or covered in thorns or anything. It's just, it's not local to Lamorta and Lamordia. And it's not a plant you've seen anywhere else. It's just kind of like fleshy and odd. Can you tell us about this? Lucha? Uh, those are bonds that you have just cut. Is this a trick question? Was I not supposed to ask to be set free? Because you could tie me back up again if you have to. I think I should tie you back up. And I pick up the bonds. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, wait, uh, uh, let's not be too hasty. Um, would I be correct in assuming that um, your erstwhile captor was the one that bound you in those things? Oh, yes, <gasps> absolutely. How would I even go about binding myself? Yes. Uh, that, yes, yes. yes. I, I think I might have an inkling of where this plant is native to, then. I don't want to know, do I? Mm, depends on how you feel about Glutzpur. Tatiana is just kind of like having a little flashback to the time that they spent on blue spur and is looking at the indentations on the back of his skull and licking her lips just a little bit. It's flashback. Every once in a while, that old itch kicks in, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's mm, strange. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, 
says, well, um, if this is everyone, can we, um, I, I would, again, I, I was foolish to try, attempt to travel in the dark. I, it's the weather in Lamordia, you see. You can never tell, and day is not always day, and it is not always the same length of time, but I would rather get out of here before I get caught in the dark again. I assume this is your entire fellowship right here. Yes, we'll, we'll need to gather all of our equipment, of course, but um, well, I, I think one. most of us... Most of us have made arrangements. Uh, yes, but missing we don't know one. when she'll return. Yes. Um, uh, um. George <sighs> Sneaky can be very <sighs> dreadful. Yeah. Um, you, ma'am, um, uh, what was your name? He's pointing at you, Nahara. Nahara. Lucio, is it? Uh, yes. Um. <laughs> you are... Radiant. Um, um, uh, you asked if I was a Miss Walker. Do you have some concept of what this is, then? Of what's binding you? Uh, no, of, of how we traverse the mists, of, of, of Miss Tokens. What little I know is, well, the way I'm able to is I must have something from that land to help guide me to there. We do, it's Lucio. He yes. reaches, he's like, e Barovia can be more difficult to locate, unfortunately. But um, he reaches in his pocket and he pulls out an iron coin pressed with the profile image of a man. Um, I believe, Brother Uriah, no, the currency you had was a Darconian coin. Um, yes, though, uh, I think I've seen coins of this mint before. Most of you have laid eyes on Strahd before, so you are aware it is Strahd's profile yes. pressed into this metal coin. Uh, and he just reaches out and he says, if you leave this for your friend, it may be able to guide them safely, hints. Well, safely, hints. Oh, thank you. We yes, could that... leave, it, leave it with ammos? I think that would be wise, yes. <laughs> um, Tell me. You said you were afraid of what would happen uh, or what you would encounter once darkness falls. Is there something specific? Uh, and he describes what grabbed him. Again, you know, he's tentacles, teeth, red eyes came in the night. I see. I've never seen such a thing before. I mean, I've encountered my fair share of things in the mist. The undead, ghosts, undead werewolves, undead, never something like that. Right. Well, I'm sorry for the circumstances in which we met, but thank you for taking us. I have a strange sense about you all that you're not, hmm, you all are different. I like different, I'm different too. All the Stanny are different. <laughs> but please don't let me hold you. We could converse at length while we are... What is it Vistani do? I am not from this land. What don't Vistani do? We're, um, we're travelers. We're merchants. Normally, okay. uh, we hail... We hail usually from Barovia, but we, we come and go with a freedom that is often denied at the residents of these lands. Given to why you is by that? Strahd? We do not so casually speak his name. <laughs> please Strahd, Strahd, Strahd. 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 Please, please, please stop before you, do you, before you enter Barovia. Strahd. Please. Strahd. Um, no, uh, Tatiana... Uh, Seriously, though, I, I think Luciano's on to something here. Um, they say, they say he hears you when you say his name. And Here's... it's entirely possible that we're, while within the bounds of Barovia, that will apply. Well, I don't believe it. What happens if he hears us? We'll summon him? Mm, he'd know it. One assumes our exact whereabouts. Maybe it would just save us a little time and travel. <sighs> I think it's best that we meet him on our terms rather than his. It's wise. Excuse me, um, uh, Miss Valentine. Um, you clearly are intelligent and fearsome, uh, as are all of you. They're strong in, in, in will and in arm, but you are not the equal 
of Lord Strahd von Zarevich. No mortal is. Who said we're mortal? He faints. <laughs> he literally faints. <laughs> uh, I've reached brother... out to catch him after he's already fallen. <laughs> Uh, Brother Uriah will reach into his medical supplies and pull out some equivalent of smelling salts or some herb yeah. that has a similar effect. And it's like, hmm? um, I must have been you'll have to, some sort of fever. I could have sworn she said the strangest thing. Um, you'll have to forgive my my uh, comrades. Um, they, they sometimes have quite the the, the sharp sense of humor. Um, are you all right? I, I think I will not be truly all right until I've crossed the threshold into Barovia, but um, I just, um, mm. ooh, something smells magnificent. Is someone smoking meat? I did not mm. tr tr trust Desmond just, like, hands out to everybody, like, eat this. And just oh. gives everybody, like, a palm-sized portion tell me of meat. You I just see, pass mine to Tatiana. He just slams okay. into it and looks up with his face covered in barbecue sauce and is like, oh, you might imagine I didn't trust the meat in Lamoria. Like you think you're eating chicken and it turns out it used to be half duck, half cat. I just, oh, and goes back to eating. I have no memory of eating strange things there. <laughs> um, uh, our, our friend here did raise... I think what is a valid point and one that we really should address, uh, while we are within the bounds of Barovia especially, perhaps we could come up with mm, some sort of code name for our quarry. Uh, speaking his name aloud could be quite detrimental to our health. Okay, well, what other things do we know about him? He is... Um, he we could we could call him the Lord of Barovia. Even that would probably be better. I get the feeling that's not going to work too well. Mr. He's got S? the pointy teeth. Ooh, his teeth are pointy. We could yes, just what call else him, do we know about him? We could call him by his title, the Count. He's very pale. County pointy pale. <laughs> that mm. takes a long time to say. Uh, yeah, but, right. All right. The I'm Count's fine. not bad. The Count. Count. Ha, ha, ha. Ah, 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 yes. I like it. It's no laughing matter, I assure you, but yes, okay, it's better than the alternative, yes. I apologize, uh, I lost control of myself there in my hunger, but that was magnificent, uh, sir. Um, please, if you would, uh, uh, gather your belongings so that we might be about our business. Yes. I have a blue bindle. Would you like me to carry that for you? Yes. I throw it at him. And he's like, because it's like way heavier than it seems because it's so effortless for you. You know, and he's like, mm. and that's just, exactly. what have you got in here? Do you, you carry stones rocks, on purpose? My favorite yes, rocks. It really is rocks. I, I, uh, yes, thank you. How will you get stronger if you don't carry rocks? Hmm? That is not a saying I'm familiar with, but it, it makes since <laughs> hmm. what did the rest of you do before you set out question i just wanted to get refreshed mm -hmm. has uriah yet shared old broadfoot's recipe with desmond i leave that up to uriah i'm just trying to did we establish that i don't before? think he shared it before but uh desmond is definitely down to learn new recipes I think before we leave that that will be one thing Uriah does is, you know, on a piece of parchment written out and sealed with a wax seal. It's like, I think old Broadfoot would be <clears throat> honored to have a cook, a chef of your talents uh, in possession of his recipe, Desmond. I appreciate that. Important point. When I make it the, when I make it the first time, you'll be the first person to taste it. Important point of clarification. What's the secret ingredient in old Broadfoot's brisket? <laughs> hmm. I'm going to say it's probably, I'm going to say it's like an, maybe a dark ale based sauce. Hmm. Got some of that. And there's probably, there's probably a little bit of halfling leaf in there. I mean, there's always a little bit of halfling leaf in there, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, excellent. Does anyone else do anything before you all prepare to set out? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Nahara will gather her belongings, and when she does, she picks up that Taroka deck and will do I saw, a... that, I saw that look in your eye. I know that look. Yes. I know that look. Okay. <laughs> all right. And so she will do... Uh, she will pull a card for uh, what immediately lies in store for us. Immediately lies in store. Does someone want to? Yep, tell her when. Now. I'm not looking. Paladin. The Paladin. Paladin. Just and noble warriors, those who live by a code of honor and integrity. Hmm? Your face. <laughs> the streak continues. The Taroka streak continues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're gonna draw another Don't one. It's just the one gonna do it. Uh, let me see. So we have what immediately lies in store. What immediate danger? Mm -hmm. should we be constantly aware of? Is there a picture of Strahd on one of those? <laughs> there <laughs> could just, be. It's just draw the Strahd card? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps unforeseen mm -hmm. challenges mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is the better way to put it. Somebody want to? Somebody say when. Now. Dark Lord, literally Strahd. <laughs> oh, oh, could be anyone, yeah. or could be any Dark Lord. Yeah, but this is this is far too spooky for my taste. <laughs> Mild consent. I, you know what? I've always gotten B Day, but this is the first time I've gotten the Mark Mirror. Absolutely not. Nope. <laughs> Reaction. Mm hmm. You know, I, I can't even top that. I was going to give you some spooky outro before we went to break, but did that, did, okay. I can't, what What am I, I can't. Because I got to do these in threes, or you got to do one or three. So I'm going to do, my last one is going to be, <laughs> what is going to, you, no, I know. I can't believe you do. <laughs> the dark, you're <laughs> like, oh, well, there could be Strahd. I'm like, there could be one in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this will be, what. what's going to help protect us? Okay. Anytime somebody want to go wizard. That is great. Okay. That one. Mm. No spoilers, but. Okay. No, sir. I don't like it. That could be, a, I mean, that could be a couple of people concern. we know. That could be a couple of people we know. I'm not even, I'm not even, I'm not even gonna, no, I'm not even. <laughs> Not even gonna. Not even gonna. We're going to break. <laughs> we're going to break. Yeah, we're going to break. Ten minutes. Just <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I would say maybe we're gonna burn the Taroka deck, but that might make it worse. I don't know. I don't know. It might yeah. retaliate. No. Yep. Yeah. 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 All right. Ten minutes. Oh, that's what freaking Bixby came. Why would Bixby say what? That was weird. I don't know. It's happening over here too. If I, if I die, get revenge, y'all. I'm gonna smudge this place with some holy water while we're on break. <laughs> Ten minutes. Don't go nowhere. Uh, I'm gonna give the name of the patrons when I come back. <laughs> All right, bye. Okay.
Hello, and we are back. Uh, thank you all. Of course, uh, we have to list our patrons for the first, the the first time in the year 2022. Thank you to to our top patrons here: Aaron Duran, Alan Zozo, Aurelia Rolf, Black Watch Ronan, Brad Demogd, Chris Lewis, The Pretzel Bear, Chris Smoot, Christopher Clindering, Craig Savage, Kralis, David Bonney, Dean Nicole, Donald Scott Massey, Ducati, Flannel Fries, Forrest S. Moore, Grafumbly, Graham Ross, Guy Vanderbrink, Ian Brooks, Josh Olin, Just Link, Kyle Garrett, Matthew Mekashiva, Mercy Malunas, Mr. Al Bear, Nathan Crowder, Nick Bernard, Nightcrawler, Packery 101, Patch, Project Wolfbear, Reese, Reverse Aquanoth, Rob Bacon Golem Tremarco, Ronan Monkey, Rosie and Sean at Sip Happens, Rum So Chicken to Queen Bee, That Moon Kid, Tracer Vision, The Undisputed Baron of Disneyland, Vladimir Night Road, War on Reality, We Knuckin' Futs, and Zort one again thank you all so very much for your support we literally cannot do what we do without you and i was remiss i didn't mention earlier our art prints are still available with the uh amazing art of mr aaron schubert museum quality uh the link is if you type exclaim bds art in the chat okay and with that being said is you all plunge into the mist uh, with Lucio ahead of you, it is a very different experience than when you all follow Nahara through the mist, where she's often pulled or drawn by the trinket in question that resonates with the domain that you all are trying to reach. He simply moves through the mist like a wary traveler. He moves slowly, pausing on occasion to, to listen or watch. And on odd intervals, you do hear things as the sounds of the carnival drop away behind you. You do hear the ambient moan of the undead. But you start to hear an increasing number of wolf howls. They get louder and louder to the point that they are almost deafening, that it must be dozens maybe hundreds of wolves all howling in unison and you emerge from the mist onto a stone road the fog spills out of the forest to swallow up the road behind you ahead jutting from the impenetrable woods on both sides of the road are high stone buttresses looming gray in the fog huge iron gates hang on the stonework Dew clings with cold tenacity to the rusted bars. Two headless statues of armed guardians flank the gate, their heads now laying among the weeds at their feet. They greet you only with silence. What would you all like to do? Ah, oh, so, um, uh, this is Barovia. Oh, these are the gates of Barovia, it's... but, but yes... And you wanted to come back here? That should give you an idea of my experience in Lamordia, yeah, yes. You said it was dark and depressing, but this is more than I reckoned. Oh, this is the good part of it, actually. Hmm. Well, what makes this the good part? I know that Brother Uriah will know some of this already, but for our sake, since we are, I'm sure, soon parting ways here, do you have any recommendations in the ways to travel safest throughout Barovia? Whenever you can, stick to the roads. Any time that you depart them, bad things tend to start happening. Um, if I what had... if we are the bad things? Uh, you look very fearsome, um, and I would not challenge you. Um, but you ask the safest route. The safest route is the roads. The further you stray, the worse it becomes. And I'm actually going to drop here in this chat a picture of what those gates look like, because we have the technology for that. Your people, the Vistani, should we encounter 
more of your people here, would they be welcoming to us? Would they be hostile? Is there anything? Um, well, Do I you don't... have like a secret code word you could give us that we give them? We have many secret codes, but not that I could give. That's why they're secret codes. Um, hopefully, uh, you meet them under better circumstances than I have met you all. Um, I although, would argue certainly. that us showing up and preventing you from getting your insides sucked out of your skull is actually excellent circumstances for you. So once again, if you have any influence on making sure that they are friendly to us, I would love if you would make sure of it. Well, he's not going to be with us the entire time. Uh, right. Would, uh, exactly. You might want to follow the road towards the village of Barovia. I'm sure you will You will encounter multiple people there. Maybe someone who can uh, help you on your further journey towards the castle, which I don't recommend. Um, the uh, Count can usually be located there. I assure you, once you go through the gates, you cannot miss it. But I still do not advise it. And I must impress upon you. Stay on the road. So we shall. Uh, thank you, Lucio, for, for all your help. Hmm. But Castle Ravenloft, I fear, is our destination. Intentionally? I, I just, I, I must know. I just it's must know. Complicated. Why? Yeah. Should we start from the beginning, or...? <sighs> I fell from the sky mm -hmm. and I saw Uriah and there was a fi that's too we all go at the same it's time? too so far back. I came from another. I was killed and now a small slug connected to mystery beings I cannot describe to you operate my body as some sort of a mechanical puppet. Mm. I apparently have lived many lives. I can't remember any. And... Somehow tied to all of this. I assure you we all have a very rich backstory, but... Suffice it to say, we have business with the Count. You don't have to jest. If you don't want to tell me the truth, just say so. It's oh, fine. I, 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 okay. Count with you. Fine. You wouldn't believe us if we did. You asked about the nature of the Vistani. Um, yes. Again, we are individuals, of course. I cannot speak for all of my people, as I assume not all any of you can speak for all of yours. But um, again, we are wanderers and outcasts and tend to have a soft spot for fellow wanderers and fellow outcasts. I will tell you that respect will take you quite a ways in this world, but and he looks right at you, Valentine. He says, the people of these lands are very much accustomed to cowing to a strong hand and to preserve their own lives. So your more forward tactics will probably still be equally effective. Just do not expect any help from the common folk against the um, <clears throat> county, pointy, undeady. The count is fine. You'll nail the, the count. We just said the count. The count's fine. Don't count on any help from the common people. Oh, I see what you did there. <sighs> Shall we? Yes, I, I suppose so. <clears throat> He starts walking towards the gates, and they begin to creak open as he's approaching them. They're huge. And you can see this pale, forlorn land on the other side. And he doesn't slow as he walks towards it. I assume the rest of you enter in. Yes. I follow him in the front. As you walk through, rolling thunderclouds cast a gray pall over the land of Barovia. A deathly stillness hangs over the dark woods. The evergreen trees of the Zvalich woods climb the sides of the mountains that enclose the valley. The largest of these peaks is Mount Baratok, with its snow-covered cap and rugged slopes. Baratok's slightly smaller twin, Mount Gakis, is mostly bald with tufts of trees here and there. Between these two mountains stands Lake Zarovich, which is fed by streams of ice-cold water pouring down the face of Mount Baratok. On the south side of the lake rests the town of Valaki, enclosed by a palisade. 
West of the two mountains, atop a hill, stands the Abbey of St. Markovia, around which the Barovians built a walled village named Kresk. Between Vallaki and Kresk lines the ruins of Argen Volstholt, the fallen bastion of a knightly order called the Order of the Silver Dragon, wiped out by Strahd and his army. East of the mountains lies the village of Barovia, shrouded in mist and bereft of walls and defenses. The dark silhouette of Castle Ravenloft looks down on this village from its perch atop a thousand-foot-high column of rock known as the Pillar Stone of Ravenloft. Uriah, we're going there? You maybe should have picked this for your lord. It's a very nice castle. Um, well, I was I was born in Darkon, so I really didn't have much um, say in the matter. Um, no, I know, yeah. but if you did. I'm not sure I would choose to uh, have the Count as my sovereign. <clears throat> Nahara. As you lay your mortal eyes on Castle Ravenloft for the first time, it is incredibly familiar. Not only have you seen it in the vision that you beheld earlier today in the carriage approaching it, that dream that you have every night, that's the place. You are absolutely certain. I, seeing this, I just, unintentionally, but just dig my claws into Uriah's shoulder. <laughs> Nahara, are you all right? This is, this is it. This is what I've seen. Remember in the orb, but not just that. I've seen the inside of this place. Where, night when? after night. Every night. I see. Oh. Well. Then I suppose our paths have been leading here for quite some time. Yes. And somehow, knowing all this, it still doesn't make any sense to me. We shall, we shall face this mystery together, yes? Yes, but so far everything is we've we've had some wonderful times and, and cherished some good times among our adventures, but this and I look towards everybody, this is nothing to be taken lightly. I quite agree. Shall we? Desmond. Yeah. Your nose catches an all too familiar scent. Death. There's a body, a human body, somewhere very nearby. Can I tell where it is? Like, which direction? Mm-hmm. It is um, sort of to your right. It's coming that direction just off the path towards the tree line. I go to check it out. And just while I'm walking, there's a dead body over here. So I'm going to have a glance. What? If you step off the path, Lucio is very much like, uh, on the path. I mean, there's, prob there's lots of dead bodies here. It's Barovia. I okay. Uh, <clears throat> um, it's, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just wait here, if that's okay with you, brave adventurers. I'll, I'll here. Question, is it daylight or evening? It is odd. There is a very just non-specific grayness in the air. You you get the distinct sense this is a place that only ever gets so bright, but it is probably daylight. You can see far enough that this is 
probably it. Best to be safe, just in case. As Desmond leaves the path, I'll raise my eyes of the grave. You do not sense any undead within 60 feet of you. This, um, this corpse that you see, do we, do we all see it or is this off? Well, the foul scent leads you to a human corpse half buried in the underbrush about 15 feet from the road. The young man appears to be a commoner. His muddy clothes are torn and raked with claw marks. Crows have been at the body, which are surrounded by paw prints. The man has obviously been dead for several days, and he holds a crumpled envelope in one hand. I'm going to slowly approach him, and I'm going to put one of my hands on his forehead and cast Speak with the Dead. Excellent. And did I feel like that was Valentine taking the letter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just going to reach right in and slip it out and like not in any secret way, like sure. very much holding it in front of everybody. Sure. I'm going to send you what it looks like. And then I'm going to send you what it actually says, because if you all are like me, that font is rough. <laughs> uh, Nahara, you can speak with dead and his jaw is intact, which is the only requirement. So as his corpse lay there half buried, he says, <sighs> which you know means it has worked. You can ask him questions. I'm actually looking up again for myself. How many you get to ask him? Five. Five questions you can ask that he will answer to the best of his ability. How did you meet your end? Wolves. Giant wolves. And at the giant wolves, I look up at Uriah because this is definitely something that I'd seen and told him about. Mm -hmm. This, you don't. Nahara, as an aside, you don't feel like this is the exact same place. You clearly saw yourself approaching Castle Ravenloft, but it definitely was like this. It was this mm. vibe, what you witnessed. Well, perhaps I'll leave the other questions to after we see what's in that letter. Looking over at Valentine. I pass it around after reading it. Would you like to read the letter there, Valentine? Sure. It says, Hail thee of might and valor. I, Burgomaster of Barovia, send you honor with despair. My adopted daughter, the fair Irina Kolyana, has been these past nights bitten by a, a vampire. For over 400 years, this creature has drained the lifeblood of my people. Now, my dear Irina languishes and dies from an unholy wound caused by this vile beast. He has become too powerful to conquer. So I say to you, Give us up for dead and encircle this land with the symbols of good. Let holy men call upon their power that the devil may be contained within these walls of weeping Barovia. Leave our sorrows to our graves and save the world from this evil fate of ours. There is much wealth entrapped in this community. Return for your reward after we are all departed for a better life. Signed, Koliana Idarovich, Burgomaster. The moment you finish reading that, you all hear a wolf. One wolf howl in the woods. We should probably get back to the path. Uh, do you want to speed round some questions? Yes. Uh, what is your relationship to the Burgomaster? He asked me to leave the letter on the gate. For who? People like you who should have turned back. Well, we don't have that option. <sighs> I believe that is three questions. That is three. What 
where does, oh, um, a this burgomaster of second wolf begins howling. Two wolves now. This burgomaster of Barovia, where does he reside? In the village of Barovia. Yes, it feels like you should get that question back. I mean, that was not... yes because I thought it was a specific. Uh, but he, even he even based, based on even based on what Lucio told you, you are in the land of Barovia, but there is a village of Barovia. There is a oh, specific I see. Place. Yeah, mm-hmm. I see. New York City within New York City in the village, basically. Do you know anything about this Irina? She is cursed. She is lost. This entire land is lost. And so I fled. And his head sinks back down into the mud. Perhaps we should pay a visit to the Burgomaster. A third a bad stop while we're here. wolf begins howling. But we should very also much get back for now. Yes, time. I could also be a wolf, but for your sake. And I just Thank very you, hesitantly just go back and cover his eyes back up, and very awkwardly, since this is the first attempt at doing this, awkwardly step back and back onto the road. Brother Uriah, before we go, I will cast gentle repose upon the corpse and say a small prayer to Ezra. I'm not sure if this man was a follower of her or more likely the morning lord, given this is Barovia, but at least he will not rise as an undead beast immediately. I also cast mold earth to bury him in a nice uh, shallow grave. Perfect. Very kind of you. Um, I will say two things I didn't say. Um, When you opened the letter, there was a large B and a wax seal that was stamped into it. And the letter is dated about a week ago. Again, mm. time is very strange here, but you all know when Midwinter was. So he, he's been there about a week. Uh, however, while you all are praying and burying, a fourth and fifth wolf begin howling. But when you all make your way back to the road, they stop. He wasn't getting. This guy... I had no reason to exaggerate that, okay? Okay. Um, I realize my debt to you is paid, but I don't believe my mother would ever forgive me if I left such woefully unprepared travelers alone in our lands. Uh, so perhaps I will accompany you as far as the village of Barovia, but no further. Hold on, not so fast. We will accompany you because there there are five of us and we are very strong and powerful. And so we will stay together, but it is for us to protect you. Yeah, perhaps we could say that we will all walk in each other's company. Mutually beneficial. Exactly. Okay, I'll settle for that. Yes, fine. Um... It is still some distance from here, unfortunately, so we should probably make all haste. Yes, very wise. As you all are making your way down the road here, Brother Uriah, you... You, Brother Uriah, this time your nose knows something ahead of everyone else. You get the distinct sense of sickness on the wind. You've been to many a hospital, treated many a fever. You're aware of what it smells like. I'll uh, inform the others of this, and um, I shall also retrieve my plague doctor's mask uh, from my satchel and perhaps affix it to my face 
you put it on and as you all walk a few more feet um you see what looks like um a barn and a couple of other smaller buildings um standing in a clearing nearby and as you all get a little closer desmond you're the next to pick up on it but past a certain point all of you do to the rest of you it kind of smells just more just like sweat and quite frankly human filth um but illness an air genazi i can hold my breath indefinitely and i will do so <laughs> absolutely absolutely It's probably, um, the road goes past it, but it's probably set 50 feet back from the road, and the forest around it has been cleared. Just to be clear, we all think this barn is probably just piles of bodies? It's not death. It's illness. Oof. There may be those who, um could use the assistance of someone with my skills. Um, perhaps we should check if there are mm, survivors? I think so. That letter said something about letting holy men call upon their power. And perhaps what you can do with the aid of Ezra can do a lot of good in this land. Hold on, not so fast. Can we talk about this? Because remember in Valkovnia, we went to help these sick people and it turns out they infected all of us. Do we not there care about that? There was that, yes. But okay. uh, certainly if there are those in need, I, I cannot turn away. Sometimes. Do you ever think, Uriah, maybe I'm too good? Oh, no, if anything, the opposite. Perhaps I'm not good enough. Perhaps I'm not, not doing what I can to, to help others within the, the full range of my abilities. You know what, Uriah? I want to empower you to believe that you are the most important brother in the room. Uh, well, I thank you, but we should see if anyone needs help, yes? I was stalling, but I can't even smell it, so I guess you lead the way. Does anyone have a protective spell of some sort? Like what sort? Like a bubble where we can't get poisoned. Mm. Some like that, but it's not really not being able to get poisoned. Okay, just oh. asking. Disease yeah. is a different thing than poison, though, so... Okay, but disease then. I mean, the nose of this mask has like a, a an orange stuffed with you know, studded with cloves and some flowers, and um, it makes it smell better. Um, you know what? Mm. I'm going yes, to uh, pull Valentine aside and just casually cast enhance ability. Uh, bears endurance. I can only cast it on two people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you'll have uh, advantage on con saves. Uh, it's actually a two d six temporary hit points. Hmm. Um, and you know what? I almost cast it on myself, but then I touch Brother Uriah's back. I don't even tell him what I'm doing, but I cast it on Valentine and Uriah. When Tatiana <laughs> puts her hand on you, you just feel hale and hearty, Brother Uriah. Oh, we roll two d sixes. Mm -hmm. Or she does, actually. Okay. Uh, together. Oh, it's just six. <laughs> hey, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yes, Brother Uriah. Oh, well. um, yes, I, I think perhaps I will call upon Ezra's protection as well, and I will cast resistance on myself. Mm -hmm. uh, you all see a swirl of mist come up from the ground and just sort of circle around Brother Uriah and then dissipate. Desmond and Nahara, give me perception checks. Guidance. Ooh. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, Desmond, you notice kind of perched atop this building. 
uh, is a group of ravens. Um, not unusual. They're scavengers. They smell what you smell and realize it's probably just a matter of time. So they're just chilling on the roof. Nahara, you notice one of them is distinctly bigger than the others and is absolutely looking at you. Like just watching this five of you as you walk up. Lucio having stayed on the road. Hmm. I, how far away is it from me? It's up on the roof of the barn, so 20 feet. I mean, you're sort of 30 feet from the barn. It's kind of 20 feet up, so uh, I'm terrible at geometry, so we'll call I'm gonna, it 30 feet. Looking over at it, I'm just going to slowly just start flying just low above the ground to see if it gets scared off. And if it, I will go as far as I can to meet this bird if it's still there. When your wings come out, you see they all turn and look at you. And as you start floating that direction, uh, the handful of other ravens all do sort of like hop a little bit at first. And then as you get closer, they fly away. But the big one doesn't. It still just sits there looking right at you, making eye contact. Uh, using speak with animals, I'll speak to this creature. Mm -hmm. Are you surprised to see someone like me? My lady, I think anyone that says they're not surprised to see someone like you is lying. Mm. You do not hail from these lands. None of you do. We do not. Although the cleric of Ezra, he seems Darkonian by his dress and manner. Is, uh, do, remembering that, is that, that is where your eye hails from, Yes. That's correct. Hmm. You're very observant. One tries, and it does just sort of like kind of start preening its feathers a little bit. And it's like, how do you keep your feathers clean with no beak? Um, it's it's a lot more grooming than I care to, to discuss publicly, but yes, I don't have I don't have a beak, so it is quite challenging. Hmm. What is it that, or have you seen, well, seeing as how we are new here, have you seen anything about in close quarters that we should be aware of? A plague has taken hold in the people below. There are a number of them, 15 at my last count, although the fever may have taken some of them away, which is what some of my less sophisticated associates were hoping for. Not me, of course. I hope that they all recover swiftly, but... How I... long ago did this set in? Mm, within the week. Is it usual to get plagues in this land? <sighs> there is nothing usual in these lands, but if you are asking, does it give me some... Odd pause or suspicion, no. Death comes swiftly and arbitrarily here. I see. Why, however, are you here? Such a we... colorful assembly. We have the unfortunate task of having to meet the lord of this land. Oh? Why? It's a bit complicated. But our fates are somehow tied, unfortunately. And we wish to... Well, I don't want to seek his aid, but we all have reasons why we're here. Somehow tied to this land. If I were to approach your large blue friend there... Might I do so without harm? Yes, but let me give her a little warning. Uh, and <laughs> uh, looking down, I'll just send a message to Tatiana uh, and say, oh, oh, I'm sorry, what was your name before I... I apologize for my manners, but I have yet to give it. But 
In exchange, I also do not ask yours. That's fair. And I look over to Tatiana, send a message. Our acquaintance here would like to have a word with you. Tatiana is naturally preparing for uh, her insides to be immune to disease by preparing her outside. So one-handed push-ups, but alternating arms. <laughs> Symmetry. You see, this raven flies, and it's 50% larger than a normal raven. It's very big. But it lights down, and it lands on the ground, and it very much just looks Tatiana up and down. And, like, <gasps> turns its head. And then it turns and looks at Desmond, and it actually, like, you see it cranes its head a little bit and then kind of hops to the side. Uh, like it's trying to get out of get out of easy arms reach of him. Uh, quick clarification. Mm -hmm. um, was Nahara using message to talk to this beast? Uh, she was using, I was speak, using with animals. speak with animals. Oh, great, mm -hmm. great, great. Mm -hmm. Cool. I do have to speak with animals. <clears throat> <clears throat> What's up? Sick people here? Fascinating. And it like hops slightly closer, but again, kind of like clearly making like a semicircle away from Desmond, like looks him up and down and then looks back at you. You've never seen a power lifting air genasi? That is an accurate statement, nor have I ever seen an air genasi, nor have I ever seen someone of your ferocity that was capable of speaking with the beasts. I'm sorry, but if you're trying to, you know, pick me up, uh, birds are not my type. What would be your type for the point of reference? I met this guy named Corridor who had a stall in the market once, but I don't really have a type. It's mostly just me and Valentine through thick and thin. Which there one? used to be someone else, but now it's just me and Valentine. Which one is Valentine? Never mind. Uh, not here. Not present. Hmm. Mm. Fair. It... Because you did not give your name. Well, apparently that's not a thing around here. Uh, apologies to you. And to the rest of you, you guys are just hearing like... <laughs> 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 you know, like crows and ravens make all those weird clicks. And... <laughs> you know, and stuff. <laughs> but he looks back and forth. He's like, I assure you. I am in no means intending to be rude, and you must guard such things carefully. Not to say that you should not tell anyone your name, but you should guard it as a prized possession. In the wrong hands, knowing your name can be used quite powerfully to your detriment. Thank you for this stage advice, Bird. Are any of you wearing <laughs> any jewelry? or anything? I mean, <laughs> yeah, right. I'm very shiny. Mm -hmm. As a uh, as a pr on principle, so mm -hmm. I wear my pearls, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and gorgeous. also I will say I I do have mage armor up, so I look a little fancy. But also, I just need to clarify that I have mage armor up. That's true. <laughs> I was like, I don't know why you'd feel the need to clarify that, but uh, just for the record, just not saying it's gonna we're gonna find out imminently. What does your mage armor look like, by the way? Um, my mage armor right now looks a little bit different. Um, it takes to the very feminine form of her dress and curves in an almost corsets in the center that comes to uh, black kind of pointed tips at the edges of her armor uh, or at the edges of her shoulders. It cuts down around her neck so that you can still see her pearls just peeking through it uh, and has gold detailed edges that just sparkle a little bit when you hit, hit it with a bit of light. I realize uh, I'm, that's an incredible visual for the record. Uh, I realize I'm being vague, but over time, you all have found certain trinkets and things of that nature. Is anybody wearing anything that you might have found somewhere along the way in your travels through the mist? Yes. Um, I have the signet ring that was given um, by, why can't I remember his name? Uh, Uriah's uncle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And Zal, yes, there we go. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have the ring that I had acquired from a train ride that we took very early on in our travels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the rest is just the usual, usual accoutrement, necklace, okay. halo, sparkliness. Okay, perfect. 
I just got a shirt. <laughs> Very lovely shirt as well. Um, it's too it, it, it turns and it looks at both of you and it says, if you wish to have a look around inside, I assure you, I, I will wait. Uh, I'm interested to see what you find myself. And it sort of like flutters up to a nearby tree and just kind of like sits on the branch. Um, if we're done with all the, the back and forth uh, calling, I, I really think I should see if anyone needs some help. Oh, I mean, good, good idea. So according to our friend here, it's they've been sick for about a week. Right. Um, well, I'll, I suppose I'll take the initiative. Um, uh, I've uh, attempted to protect myself. I, I'm sorry I can only do it to myself uh, for now, but uh, I, I shall take the lead since I'm the one who insisted we stop. Um, go up to the door and rap upon it. As you do, it sort of you know shakes in the hinges as it is wood planks that are like warped with age. And inside, you just hear um, coughing. And you hear the creaking of a cot. And a second later, you hear, No, we have nothing to trade and nothing that you would want to steal. Um, I speak to you as a, as a priest of Ezra, Lady of the Mists. If you are sickened, perhaps I can aid you. I am a healer. <sighs> you may be a bit early yet for my funeral. Come back in a day or three. I'm um, sure I'll be quite ready to go on then. Uh, well, um, perhaps we can uh, circumvent the funeral entirely if you would allow me to examine you. You hear... And you see pale fingers reach in and are kind of trying to grab the door from the inside and kind of pull it open like it's stuck, you know, and the doors kind of bite into the ground and sort of bow a little bit. <laughs> uh, I kick it. Do you <laughs> oh, sorry, I forgot this someone was standing there. He very much falls to the ground right in front of you and a stench wafts out in just assaults. Even those of you that can't breathe, it's almost like it gets in your pores. Uh, there are 15 people in here, but you see there is 18 beds. Um, most of them, many of them lay unmoving. You think you would think they were dead if they weren't still covered in sweat. Um, yes. They are pale. They, as many of them have almost a, a bluish green tint to them. Their cheeks are sunken Nothing in. wrong with that. That's healthy looking. <laughs> Is this some sort of hospital ward? The guy who's on the floor, who is like trying to pick himself up again. Again, he's dressed in rags. Pretty much all of them are. You can tell they're commoners, but they've been sweaty with fever for seven days, so their clothes are very much reflecting it, and most of them have taken off as much as modesty will allow. And he's I like, help uh, him up uh, by taking one arm and lifting him easily. It's almost like lifting a baby, Tatiana. It's <laughs> off-putting how easily, how easily he's moved. Uh, a, uh, man, a man his size should probably weigh three stone more. But he, <laughs> I, will, I will reach out as Tatiana steadies him and cast restoration or lesser restoration on him that should allow me to remove the disease that's afflicting him. Is he sort of struggles to tell you when you touch him, Brother Uriah, you can see the pox does come off of him. It doesn't necessarily help the malnourishment, though. <laughs> but you see, his eyes do widen slightly. And he just kind of reaches out and puts his hands on your shoulders. And he says, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh. it's Ezra. Ezra, you say, pray, praise be to Ezra. I, it's, I, I will offer my prayers to her and her alone henceforth. Oh. Oh. Uh, I'm but a vessel for her grace. Uh, I am pleased that I am able to help you. Um, oh. I'll reach in and, uh, yeah, some uh, probably like just some 
hard tack or some something something that's not going to be too hard on the stomach of a uh, of starving person. Oh, how about this? And I have kept uh, some of Desmond's meats from earlier. Ooh, that that that, that might not be the that. first thing that a starving person should eat. Uh, Are perhaps you sure? a little. A only, little simpler. Only, only the last thing. That's what you want for your, your final meal. Uh, not necessarily the first one. Although, uh, Tatiana, do you by chance have any good berries as a druid? You know, I looked at the spells I could prepare today, and I thought, that's a thing Tatiana would never carry. <laughs> <laughs> Valid. You have to be who you are. Valid. Yes. Um... He does nibble a little bit of the hard tack, and you see, Brother Uriah, even though, again, this man is worn and gaunt to seeing his ribs, he still only eats about half of it, and he looks towards a woman laying on a nearby cot, and he's like, could, could you do the same for my wife? I would not impress upon you for any more of your generosity with the food, but... No. Um... Uh, so if they bring forth, uh, perhaps we shouldn't go into the sick house, but if they bring forth the wife, then another restoration will take care of her disease. You see, she also uh, snaps awake and very much looks around and tearfully embraces her husband. Thanks, you also swears fealty to uh, Ezra. And they both, again, you know, very much explaining to you who these people are, their cousins, their neighbors, uh, their, their local townspeople. And Brother Uriah, your undead sense goes off in the other direction. Behind us? Behind you. Outside of this barn. Behind you. I'll immediately alert the others. Uh, we might have some trouble. You see in uh -huh. the woods, birds start taking off. Like something's coming through the woods in your direction. I'll um, look for the, the man that opened the door. You, hello, hi. What is this? What is coming? I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. This has never happened before? I mean, all manner of terrible things emerge from the woods and we barricade ourselves inside. Um, Perhaps you should do that uh, now. Do I have oh. any, oh, do I have Tatiana any like- broke down the door. Oh, right. Mm. Uh, she kicked it. Uh, it's you know, they, 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 they can wedge it back in there. They, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I help them. Yeah. Um, I guess take up defensive positions outside the door. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask whether this was a plague brought upon by nature or by curse, but perhaps this will answer the question. Um. Hang on one second here. Sorry. I was like, I have the thing I need. I do not has. Um, <laughs> as you, uh, well, actually, give me, um, hmm. Brother Uriah, give me medicine with advantage. Medicine advantage. Uh, the first, sorry, it's just taking a little while to register. First is a 14 and the second is a 20, dirty 20. Dirty 20. Um, You don't feel like this is a, 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 an expressly magical curse or, or plague. Um, it is sort of born out of the nature of the realms. So in that, it is magical. But you don't feel like these people have necessarily been intentionally struck low by someone. Mm. It's just... I'll, I'll let the others know. Barovia is an unpleasant place. Right then, we're just gonna jump right to this, and I just take on form of dread, just like, just fair warning. Um, yeah, if we've if we've got around before things kick off, I'll cast protection from evil. I would say, uh, is you turn and look, and again, uh, things the birds are taking off out of the trees uh, in in the nearby forest. You see a pair of piercing blue eyes glowing in the ambient gloom of the woods. And then you see a second pair as a person or what was once a person wearing heavy plate armor, but is now very clearly dead and worn down to a skeleton, which meat barely hangs on riding a horse that is an equally sorry state, that it still has barding on it, but you see the horse's bones 
underneath just slowly comes walking out of the woods. I would like to take cover uh, and hide behind something. Uh, all of you roll initiative. <laughs> I would like to, I was just I about to, say, to rage before. <laughs> <laughs> Question, B -Dave, yeah, did one that, level of rogue, rogue I got to hide that, now. Uh, mm -hmm. Protection from evil go off I will say uh, your, before. I will say your protect. I, I will give all of you uh, a, a chance to do one thing when you knew something's about to emerge from the woods. Yes, Desmond. The second Brother Uriah has protection from evil on himself, Desmond did the same and just said, mm -hmm. <laughs> First time you've seen him look like his old self in a little while, actually. Uh, hold <laughs> on here. Let me see. And initiative. Yes. Give me one second here. Yep. Un un unfortunately. Come was... on. You're not going. Uh, do late. you want initiatives in the, uh, you, uh, in the Zoom uh, chat? You, you, you can, but I'm, I am going to ask you for it here. I just um, what I need was not there. I thought it was, but it's not the right thing. Um, I hate Perfect. this die. <laughs> I have never rolled high initiative ever. <laughs> yeah. Again, you're not going last, you're going first in the next round. There we go. Um perfect. I, it's I mean, it, it's always me and you uh, I, 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 taking up that okay. next round. I will tell you this, <laughs> y'all. Th there is a um. What is up with this thing all of a sudden? Um, there is a project that is coming up that I can't necessarily speak of, that both mm -hmm. Becca and DJ are potentially going to be a part of, and we talked about having uh initiative being inhibited as being something that could happen as like a drawback, like a penalty. And I was like, doesn't matter. They always go last anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, joke's on you. <laughs> they already got that one. Um, perfect. I had an issue with like twice. And I think one of them was fighting the plant. Uh, perfect. All right. That's true. Way back when, huh? Uh, mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Finn is not with us. Shout out to our homie. Um, let's see here. Let me get it. Okay. That'll work. Uh, Nahara. 14. Uh, what? Sorry. 14. 14. Uh, Valentine. 15. 15. I'm like, also the weather may Fox Groves aren't here. Shout out to our homies. Uh, <laughs> De De Desmond. Four. Yo. And you have a not insignificant dexterity too. That really. Oh, my dex is love. It is. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's... obviously I'm not saying it out loud. Right. That's somebody, really... somebody was like, "Oh, he's gonna say it." No, he's not. Right. Um, uh, brother Uriah. Uh, I got a fourteen. Fourteen and Tatiana. Three. You, wow, you guys, you were just shocked. Shocked. I think that is my average. Maybe it yeah. is high for me for initiative. Uh, however, Valentine, you are first. Uh, you see this, uh, to be clear, this thing is coming out of the woods and still coming towards you, but it seems like it's not galloping or in any rush whatsoever. It's just like, I'll get there eventually and kill you all. <laughs> just... Excellent. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Love that for me. Uh, yeah. I'm going to do, I'm going to send off a firebolt. There's just one that I can see so far. It, it is to, it is a, a mounted rider. Yeah. But you, the okay. one, you know, one, one skeleton on one skeletal horse. Great. Yeah. I'm going to twin spell a firebolt. Perfect. Are you going to hit the rider twice or the rider and the horse? I'm going to hit the rider twice because I'm not a monster. Perfect. Well, I mean, it is very much a monstrous horse, though. Like, I mean, the horse is, you're not going to hurt its feelings, but yes. Oh. Okay. I have a 17 to hit. Which is and enough. a nat 20. Natural 20. Perfect. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, have at it. Okay, so the first one is 14 points of damage. 14. The second one, which would be doubled, is... Ooh. The second one, which will be doubled, is 19 points of damage. Wow. You do see the flames hit it and, and actually, like, punch holes in it and begin, like, burning and sizzling. And you see it looks down 
and looks up at you and opens its mouth like it's going to say something, but absolutely no sound comes out. Just <sighs> Valentine, that was incredible. Uh, whatever we've been doing is working. That's, yes, that was well struck, Lady Valentine. Well struck. Um, if my, I might make a suggestion. Perhaps you should go back to hiding afterwards, though. Yeah, yeah. I'm literally like I popped out from behind what I assume was probably like a tree or something that I could hide behind. Mm -hmm. uh, I will definitely dip right back in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> would you like to hide as a bonus action? I would. <laughs> <laughs> uh, perfect. Go though. Do go ahead and roll it because it, it it might come up how easy you are to locate. Uh, okay. However, um, Uriah and Nahara, you all are tied. Technically, um, you will act simultaneously, uh, but I, I will give it to, uh, I'll leave it up to the two of you who wants to declare first. Technically, it's going to happen at the same time, but. You can uh, I, I think I think Uriah would, would insist that Nahara go first. <laughs> Ladies first, right? Too kind. Mm -hmm. uh, how far away is he? Uh, it's about 30 feet, and it is coming your way. Uh, Perfect. Just uh, so far, it seems like it was in no particular rush. Although okay. now, now having been shot repeatedly, it might be coming more motivated. Okay. Uh, well, if he was in no, you know, I'm I'm just going to very casually point my finger at him and uh, hurl a witch bolt his way. <laughs> As one does, real cash. Just cat, yeah. really casual. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Twenty five to hit. Uh, more than enough. Okay. Going to be. Mm, sorry, while I'm While she's adding, what is 25. One? 25 points of damage. Mm -hmm. It's, you see, again, it hurtles forward and blows a significant chunk out of the middle of this thing. Like you can see it all the way through with a pale bluish light just sort of radiating inside. And again, it looks down and opens its mouth to say something, but absolutely no sound comes out. Uh, anything else for Nahara? Um, that will be it. I think I want to, for a movement, if I could just, I'm just going to fly in the air, see if I can get a better vantage point and okay. see if it, there's anything else coming. Perfect. Uh, Brother Uriah? Uriah will stride forward by a step or two. Mm -hmm. He's not running into battle. Mm -hmm. But he will present his holy... Actually, he will use the holy uh, symbol that's on his shield, presenting mm -hmm. that forcefully and saying, Back to your grave! You, you will not harm these people! And attempt a turn. Uh, that's a save for them, correct? That is a save for them that will be, I think... I want to say it's... Is it charisma-based? Uh, wisdom based for you, I think. No, I mean their save uh, against. Is it wisdom against uh, my turn? Oh, uh, I think so. What's although what it, what is your what is your number to beat? DC is seventeen. Uh, perfect. You see, um, the horse immediately bucks. <laughs> the rider it like throws him to the ground and the horse turns and runs back into the forest <laughs> and you see what the rider starts to slowly stand up and just turn back towards you well that, that, that did help somewhat I suppose tell you as an aside and... it probably helped a lot actually the, the horse was the horse is pretty rough. Yes. <laughs> uh, bonus action, because I've not cast a spell this turn. Mm -hmm. uh, the shield, which I've just presented, the sword on it glows and then seems to fly off the, uh, or it glows and disappears from the shield and then materializes right beside this guy. Perfect. As I cast spiritual weapon. Perfect. Go ahead and roll the attack. Uh could be ah a 13 uh that is not enough so although do tell me what the spiritual weapon looks like does it just look like the sword of ezra it looks like the sword of ezra it's sort of crackling with uh, divine energy and it completely whiffs as it uh as it, it swings at this guy goes to attack and just clangs against his armor uh brother uriah give me a con save Con, and I do have resistance cast upon me. Uh, which does what exactly for you? 
I'll get a D4 on top of this okay. to add to it. Okay. So that will be a 13 plus a D4. Hold on. Oh, plus four. So 17. Uh, Brother Uriah, you see this thing stands up and shoots its claw out towards you like its arm starts to extend but it disappears in midair and comes out of the shadows right behind you and is about to grab you by the head and you manage to just slightly get out of the way as the claws just shoot past you Ooh. and it just tilts its head to the side like it doesn't quite understand what happened uh what's your ac brother uriah uh, AC is 18, though, if this guy's undead, which I think he is, he'll be at disadvantage. He's very undead. Okay. Uh, it looks and it just sort of looks confused and then it shoots the claw out again. And this time it comes straight towards you. It extends the full 20 feet out and just scrapes across your shield and draws backwards. And it looks down at both hands and goes. And starts coming forward much faster now, like stalking uh -oh. towards you, brother Uriah. Uh, hmm. However, that is it for it. So, um, Desmond, you are up. You've now seen, to be clear, it reached its hand forward, but came out of the shadows to grab brother Uriah. And then also literally just stretched the distance to try and grab him. And it didn't work either. Which is perfect. Because mm -hmm. Desmond's been practicing. Um he kind of just brings his hands in and just like, while flexing, just kind of just like throws his hands at the ground mm -hmm. and casts Magic Circle. Ooh, what's Magic Circle going to do? Magic Circle creates a 10-foot radius, 20-foot tall cylinder of magical energy centered on a point on the ground that you can see within range. Glowing runes appear wherever the cylinder intersects with the floor or other surface. I choose Undead. Mm -hmm. uh, the circle affects the creature of the chosen type in the following ways. Can The creature cannot willingly enter by non-magical means. If the creature tries to use teleportation or interplanar travel to do so, it must first succeed on a charisma saving throw. Excellent. It has disadvantage on attack rolls against targets within the cylinder. Targets in the cylinder can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by the creature. And when you cast the spell, you can elect to cause its magic to operate in the reverse direction, preventing a creature of the specified type from leaving the cylinder. But, I mean, a minute. So I kind of want to keep him out of it. You see, it does sort of stop and avert its eyes slightly when the when the cylinder lights up. It doesn't turn, but it is like, and again, it opens its mouth, but does not make a sound. And right after that, Desmond casts Hunter's Mark on the okay. creature. Uh, you have it marked. If it tries to flee, you will know where it is. Um, Perfect. Anything else? That is all I can do. Perfect. Magic Circle was the cast. Uh, Hunter's Mark is a bonus action. Mm -hmm. Good to go. Uh, technically, you cannot cast Hunter's Mark because it's not a cantrip. Ah, oh, drats. Mm -hmm. It is a bonus action, but it's not a cantrip. Okay, and cool, here's then. the thing. We'll I, was get about, it next turn. I was about to let it go, rule it cool, but I've been on the internet. You know, someone's going to be like, um, you sorry, you can't. Blah, blah. You're good. <laughs> Sakai? <laughs> no eyes? Yeah, nah. I just stop. Yeah, Sakai. Sakai. Yeah. Sakai. Yeah. That's what it sounds like when you guys do that to me. I just want you to know. Yet the internet would let Mark do it. That's true. This yeah. is true. The rules don't apply to Mark. Yeah. No. Um, Tatiana, it is your turn. That's so, because Mark always respects the rules. <clears throat> to to be clear, everyone is currently in this cylinder. Yep. You can Perfect. you can leave it. It doesn't hurt you. Just currently you are within its protection as well. You know what? I've had enough of this. And Tatiana leans back, rips open her new shirt. <laughs> Wait, we and quite exposed... accounted for that. There's a number of snaps and clasps in here. Which, uh, we know you quite well by now, Tatiana. <laughs> <laughs> Right. All right, well, she reveals enough to show the bear tattoo on her stomach. Mm -hmm. And as she does, she closes her eyes and from it emerges a brown bear familiar that starts running full speed towards this thing. I have a new familiar. 
Uh, I also, I, I think that I could, so you said we excuse could do me, a single floor? Excuse, think me, of rage? excuse me, excuse me. Does the bear have a name? That is a thing I've been thinking about <laughs> <clears throat> for the <laughs> past two minutes. Um, <laughs> a bear needs a name. We can workshop it. We can workshop it. This is this is important. You know, you don't. I'm, I'm just. I've never seen someone bear their chest in that way before. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in. That's it for tonight's episode. We're uh, <laughs> we're just gonna. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> however, oh, however, uh, is that a spell that you're casting to summon it? No, it is wild companion that I can use my wild shape. Instead, because maybe my druidic powers are becoming even stronger. So I think that even though I'm raging, I can still it's, cast this wild companion. Because it is not a spell. It is a feature. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because you cannot cast uh, spells while you're raging. Yeah. Okay. We know how to play the game, Internet. Right. Perfect. Thank you for checking mm -hmm. because this was a, I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> mm -hmm. All right. So that mm -hmm. uses um, one of my wild shape actions mm -hmm. as Vrondor emerges from my chest. Ron, I'm writing it down. That's his name now, Vrondor. Is it a him? Is it a her? I don't know. We got a brown bear named Vrondor. It is a him. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Right? Uh, oh. And Vrondor will uh, run full speed and attack if he can. Yeah, no, Vrondor absolutely can can get there. It's, it's okay. less than 20 feet now because it was coming to you, so... It basically uh, yeah. is just outside the cylinder, honestly. It had more than enough movement to me. Like, uh, We're going yeah. hind legs and claws that slash across. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh huh. I thought it was a one, but it's a seven. So that is a <laughs> 13. Claws, teeth, just scratching against the armor of, uh, of this skeletal rider. But it appears like it is unharmed. It just looks down at the bear, confused. Anything else I, for Tatiana? That is my action. Mm -hmm. uh, I am going to run towards this thing mm -hmm. because yeah. I need to attack. Yeah, you don't have to go far. Yeah. Uh, um, actually, I will say, if you don't want to come out of the circle, you will be able to just step out and fight it next time. Or you can come out of the circle if you like. But if I didn't personally hit this thing, would I drop out of rage is my question. Oh, yeah. No, you need to swing at it or get swung at to keep your rage. Yes, you do. I will get swung at. I run and <laughs> uh, run around to flank. Perfect. Got it. Excellent. But that does bring us back around to the top with you, Valentine. As you see, your friend Tatiana has run out to actively engage. Excellent. Actually, hold on a second. <laughs> You see a single sling bolt from the road hurled over, miss wildly and go careening into the woods as Lucio is standing there with his sling out. Like, uh, sorry, sorry, I just wanted to, I, I, I'll do I'll do better next time. I, I, I promise, I, I promise. Okay, uh, Valentine, it is your turn. Uh, great. How close is Tatiana right now? Because the, the horse is barreling in and the, the skeleton's been knocked down. The horse has fled. It, the right. horse okay. has been turned. Like, the horse has departed the battlefield. Mm -hmm. uh, Kick it off. The, the skeletal rider is basically right in front of you. What did you say? It was 15 feet was the circle, uh, Desmond? The circle, the magic circle? 20 feet. 20 feet? It's 20 Actually, feet. Actually, no, it's 10 feet. 20 oh, it's 20, 10 feet, Why, 20 feet, 20 feet tall. High, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's 10 feet away. It gets right up to it, basically. And now Tatiana has kind of stepped out and is right next to it as well. Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, staying within cover, I'm going to use a little bit of movement, kind of like doing my best to duck behind trees. And I'm going to cast Arms of Hadar. Mm -hmm. uh, and the tentacles that are always kind of like slightly pouring out of my eyes that almost look like eyelashes if you weren't to look too closely to start pouring out and they start pouring out of her mouth as well um and uh moving towards the creature and that is a strength save of 15. it oh let me double check i rolled poorly but it might have a chunky strength um it does but not chunky enough it fails excellent mm -hmm. Roll that digitally because it's a bunch of d6s. Mm-hmm. A number of d6s. 
That's a total of 28. This 28. digital roller said five, six, 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 five. Most impressive. You hear it cracking and snapping uh, as the arms of Hadar are twisting it, and it has not given up, but it clearly is very damaged uh, by this spell. Uh, anything else from Valentine? Uh, I am going to, I also cannot actually do the um, like hide bonus action because that's not until I take another level of rogue. Uh, so I will just do my best to stay behind as much cover as possible. Uh, right. And as a bonus action, I'd just like to establish a telepathic link with Tatiana in case she gets out of uh, earshot. Perfect. All right, Nahara. Uh, Tatiana um, has engaged this thing. It is arms of Hadar up. Okay, lovely. Wait. I. Are you continuing the witch bolt? I am. I so I'm I'm outside of the circle. I am above. Well, it, it goes twenty feet. So are you going to fly more than twenty feet? Yeah, I'll get up high. I'll okay. get right over him. So you just okay. see like her wings just go whoosh, as she warps up mm -hmm. right overhead she just kind of like leans over and then like just kind of whistles for his attention mm -hmm. um and as he looks up she's gonna hurl another witch bolt at him perfect although uh witch bolt will continue doing damage as long as you maintain the concentration won't it or oh okay so i don't have to spell? roll it again i don't believe you do let me double check in case i'm uh thinking of the wrong spell like i said i got five and a half editions of this game floating around in my head so mm -hmm. um I believe you can keep burning them. Um, oh. Yep. And each of your turns for the duration, you can use your action to do another D12 of damage. Lovely. Yep. Well, it's a, I'm doing it at third level, so. Uh, but the, so the extra damage is only the first time. Subsequent damage is uh, 1D12. Is just 1D12? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Otherwise, everybody oh. would drop like a level nine and then just like bake, <laughs> and just bake everything to death. With uh, I rolled a yeah. nine. Perfect. Uh, but that is your action. If you have a bonus action, you can still do it. Uh, let me see. Do I have a bonus action? Mm -hmm. I don't believe I do. All right. So I think that is it for me. All right. Brother Uriah? Very well. Uh, I will unleash a guiding bolt. Perfect. Roll it. 18. Uh, that is enough. Lovely. Hold on. And the damage it does. Where is it? There we are. This will be radiant. Mm -hmm. 21 points of radiant damage, and the next attack will have advantage. Brother Uriah, tell me what it looks like when you destroy this thing. Uh, Brother Uriah, having been the target of its weird, stretchy hands, uh, is quite panicked and just says, Ezra, protect me! And <laughs> fires out this blast of radiant light that shears off the head of this thing completely. And its body is left there to perhaps collapse in a heap. The body just dangles as the arms of Hadar continue just breaking it into pieces. And this raven flies down from the roof, flies over your magic circle and just lands in the middle of it and stands up and turns into a young girl, maybe a teenager. And she says, huh, you all might be able to help us after all. And that is a good place for us to stop. <laughs> we will see you all next week. Thank you so much.